So I've had these two conflicting ideas in my head for years, but now we can meld them together into a single theory. How can God be everywhere at once? For thousands of years, it was a mystery left to theology, philosophy, or blind faith. Omnipresence, the idea that a divine force exists in all places at all times, was seen as something outside the reach of science, but something just changed because now in the hidden depths of quantum mechanics, we're starting to see a scientific model that eerily resembles this age-old spiritual concept. And what it reveals about the structure of reality might shake the foundations of both physics and faith. Today, we dive into the most mind-bending idea yet, a scientific reason for God's omnipresence, born from the weirdest corner of the quantum world. Let's start with something real, verified, and repeatable. Quantum entanglement. When two quantum particles become entangled, they form a connection so strong that the state of one instantly determines the state of the other, even if they're on opposite sides of the universe. Distance doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. There's no signal, no delay. The effect is instantaneous. Albert Einstein hated this. He called it spooky action at a distance. To him, it violated everything physics stood for. But experiment after experiment has proven him wrong. In 2022, researchers pushed entanglement tests further than ever. Particles were entangled, separated by kilometers, and still showed perfect correlation with each other's state, faster than light could travel between them. The conclusion? The universe allows instantaneous influence across vast distances. And that raises a disturbing question. If information can be everywhere at once, what else can? If this kind of mind-blowing science excites you, make sure to subscribe. We dive into discoveries like this every week. Now let's rewind a bit. Because this story didn't start with entanglement, it started with the observer effect. In early quantum experiments, physicists noticed something strange. When you observe a particle, it chooses a location or behavior. But when unobserved, it exists in multiple states at once, a cloud of probabilities. In other words, reality behaves differently depending on whether someone is watching. This shook the foundations of classical physics. The universe didn't appear fully real until a conscious mind interacted with it. So here's the question. Who or what is doing the observing when no one's around? One theory gaining traction is panpsychism. The idea that consciousness isn't something that emerges from complex systems like brains. Instead, it's a fundamental feature of the universe itself. According to this view, every particle, every field, every corner of the cosmos may possess a sliver of awareness, not like human consciousness, but a kind of proto-consciousness woven into the fabric of space and time. And if you think that sounds too mystical for physics, think again. Physicist David Bohm proposed a similar idea through what he called the implicate order. In Bohm's model, everything in the universe is connected through a deeper layer of reality, a hidden order where distance and separation are illusions. He described it like a hologram. Every part contains the whole, everywhere contains everything. If that's true, then maybe omnipresence isn't magical. Maybe it's structural. But here's where things get even stranger, almost unsettling even for physicists. One of the most mind-bending experiments in quantum physics is known as the Delayed Choice Quantum Eraser, and what it reveals pushes the very boundaries of how we understand reality. In this experiment, particles such as photons behave differently depending on how, or even whether, they are measured. But the real shock comes when those measurements are made after the particle has already passed through a double-slit barrier. Somehow, the particle seems to know what you'll decide in the future, and changes its past behavior to match. That's not just weird. It's a direct violation of how we think cause and effect are supposed to work. In this quantum realm, time itself appears to break down. The future influences the past. The arrow of time reverses, and it doesn't happen randomly. It happens consistently, predictably, as if the system somehow understands the totality of events. So what does this mean? It suggests that quantum systems may not be bound by linear time at all. They may operate across the entire timeline, past, present, and future, in a single unified state. In that case, they wouldn't just react to measurements. 
They would already contain all possible information about what will happen before it even happened. They wouldn't just respond to reality, they would anticipate it, even shape it. And that brings us to a hauntingly familiar question. What kind of intelligence exists outside of time, sees every point in history simultaneously, and interacts with the fabric of the universe in every place, at every moment? It's not a description pulled from a textbook. It's one we've seen in scripture, in myth, in spiritual traditions across millennia. The idea of an entity, or a field, that is timeless, omnipresent, and all-knowing. Suddenly, what was once metaphysical speculation starts to sound eerily similar to the behavior of quantum systems. Maybe we're not just discovering new laws of physics. Maybe we're catching glimpses of something far more ancient, something embedded in the structure of existence itself. Let's slow down for a moment, because this isn't just about quantum mechanics or particles or holograms. This is about something deeper, something that cuts to the heart of human experience. It's about what it means to exist, what it means to observe, what it means to be. We've spent centuries looking outward, dissecting the universe piece by piece, trying to make sense of it through equations and models. But now the very tools of physics are pointing inward, back toward the observer, back toward consciousness. And if consciousness is fundamental, not just a byproduct of the brain, but a property of the universe itself, then the implications are staggering. If time is an illusion, as some quantum theories suggest, and the present moment is all that truly exists, then what does that say about our perception of reality? And if information, the most basic currency of the quantum world, can be present everywhere at once, as entanglement seems to imply, then the boundaries we thought defined us may be far thinner than we imagined. Suddenly, the divide between science and spirituality begins to blur. Not because one is overtaking the other, but because they might have been describing the same mystery all along, just in different languages. Maybe that boundary isn't a hard line at all. Maybe it's a Mobius strip, a surface with only one side, where beginning and end are the same, and everything loops back to itself in strange and beautiful symmetry. So if you've made it this far, clearly you're drawn to these deeper questions, the kind that don't always have neat answers, but demand to be asked anyway. Hit that like button if your mind's spinning just a little and let us know in the comments. Do you think this is all a simulation? Are we touching higher dimensions? Or is it something else entirely? Something we haven't even begun to name? Let's push even further, beyond particles, beyond holograms, to the very foundation of existence itself. In the frontier of theoretical physics, many scientists are beginning to argue that what we perceive as particles, electrons, photons, quarks, aren't solid things at all. They're not tiny marbles floating in space. They're excitations in a much deeper, more fundamental layer of reality known as the quantum field. This field isn't just in one place. It fills all of space, from the edge of the observable universe to the very atoms in your body. It is everywhere, always present, always active. According to this view, matter is simply what happens when the field vibrates in a particular pattern. Light, gravity, even you, all just localized ripples in a universal ocean of invisible energy. That alone is staggering, but here's where it gets truly bold. What if that field, the thing that gives rise to everything, isn't just mathematical? What if it's aware? If the quantum field is everywhere, touches everything, and contains the blueprint for all physical interactions, then it already behaves like something divine. It's non-local. It transcends time. It links all matter. It holds memory. And if it contains the seeds of consciousness, or is consciousness in some primal, undivided form, then it could be the very mechanism behind the concept of omnipresence. Across ancient cultures and sacred texts, we find phrases like, in him we live and move and have our being. For centuries, these words were seen as symbolic, poetic attempts to describe a transcendent force. But what if they weren't metaphor at all? What if they were accurate descriptions of a real physical field that not only supports reality, but is reality? a conscious, all-pervasive presence that expresses itself through the vibrations we call matter, 
mind, and time. That would mean we're not separate from the divine. We're emerging from it. Every breath, every thought, every atom would be a localized echo of something infinite. In that light, the divide between physics and faith doesn't just dissolve. It was never real to begin with. It was always the same mystery, seen from two different sides. Now for the final twist, and it's the kind that flips everything on its head. In recent decades, a growing number of theoretical physicists have come to believe that our universe might not be as solid or three-dimensional as it appears. Instead, it could be a hologram, not in the science fiction sense, but in a deeply mathematical one. This idea, known as the holographic principle, proposes that everything we perceive in three dimensions, from the curve of space to the passage of time, and even the material objects we interact with, is actually encoded on a distant two-dimensional boundary beyond our ability to perceive. In other words, the universe we live in might be a kind of projection, a high-resolution rendering generated from data on a cosmic surface. If this is true, then what we experience as reality is more like a simulation than we ever imagined. Not a digital video game, but a hyper-complex, law-bound construct originating from a deeper layer of physics we're only beginning to understand. And here's where it gets even stranger. The glue that holds this projected universe together is entanglement. According to cutting-edge theories, entangled particles don't just communicate across space, they actually define space. They weave the structure of the hologram itself. Without entanglement, there would be no fabric to project, no framework to sustain the illusion of space and time. That's the real mind-bender. Because if entanglement underpins the very geometry of reality, if it's responsible for shaping the stage upon which all existence plays out, then it's not just a quirk of quantum mechanics. It's a fundamental feature of the universe's architecture. And when you consider that entanglement connects particles instantly, defies the normal flow of time, and exists beyond spatial separation, it starts to sound less like a physics equation and more like a modern description of omnipresence. So here we are, full circle. What once seemed like mystical poetry, the idea of a divine presence that exists in all places at once, may actually be the result of a universe projected from a unified, timeless source, a place where everything is entangled with everything else, where distance is an illusion, where presence is everywhere. If God exists, perhaps this is how, not as a being outside of space and time, but as the field, the code, the pattern from which reality itself emerges. Not supernatural, but supernatural. Not magic, but mathematics. Not faith versus science, but a convergence of both. Omnipresence, encoded directly into the source code of the cosmos. So what does this all mean? It means the ancient idea of an all-present, all-seeing consciousness, once regarded as purely metaphysical or religious, might no longer be outside the realm of scientific discussion. For centuries, science and spirituality stood at odds, but quantum mechanics is beginning to bridge that divide in the most unexpected ways. As physicists peel back the layers of the quantum world, they're finding a universe that doesn't behave like a machine, but more like a vast interconnected mind. The discovery that particles can remain entangled over infinite distances, that observation appears to shape reality, and that time itself may not flow in a straight line all point toward a truth that has echoed through human history in ancient texts, mystic traditions, and philosophical thought. Everything is connected and nothing is truly separate. The implications are staggering. If entanglement allows particles to affect each other instantly across space, what does that say about the nature of space itself? If consciousness plays a fundamental role in the collapse of quantum states, what does that say about our role in the cosmos? We are beginning to see a universe where information, awareness, and even time may exist as a unified whole, a hidden layer beneath everything we experience. And if that's the case, then perhaps omnipresence isn't some magical quality reserved for deities, but a natural consequence of how reality is structured. Maybe the quantum field, the invisible foundation of all particles and forces, is not only everywhere, but aware. Maybe it is the mechanism through which a higher consciousness, or what some traditions call God, permeates all of existence. Not hovering above us, not separated from matter, 
but embedded within the very fabric of reality, in the vibration of every atom, the curve of space-time, the pulse of every living cell. This doesn't mean science has proven God, but it suggests something profound, that science may be rediscovering truths we once only accessed through spirituality. The boundary between observer and observed, subject and object, may be dissolving. And what emerges in its place is a vision of the universe that feels both startlingly modern and timelessly ancient. A cosmos not made of dead matter, but living presence. So perhaps the divine isn't distant. Perhaps it's here, now woven into every quantum field, every moment, every breath. And as we build tools powerful enough to explore this hidden structure, from quantum computers to neural networks to space-time simulations, we may soon find that what we're discovering out there has always been something reaching toward us from within. Maybe the universe is conscious, maybe it is one, and maybe, just maybe, science is finally learning to speak its language. If this discovery changed how you see the universe, you won't want to miss what's next. Subscribe and turn on notifications, because in our next video, we're diving into how quantum computers might one day access this hidden realm and what could happen if they do.